Hello, welcome to yet another Wannabe Entrepreneur, the podcast about what's really like to bootstrap a company. My name is Tiago. I am an indie hacker, a bootstrapper, so basically a different kind of entrepreneur. So I believe in building companies without actually requiring VC money, so investment, external investment. And uh, yeah, this is my story, my at least my entrepreneurial story. I've been doing a lot of episodes in the past, what, like two and a half years or so. I don't even know. It's, it's been a while. <laughs> it's, it's been a while. And uh, I'm sorry for um, skipping a week on these weekly episodes. I normally try to always release every week. I know that uh, I don't have a specific day. Unfortunately, I once had a specific day. I know that it's better to have a specific day for you that are listening. It's better to like know uh, when uh, I'm going to release. But unfortunately, I don't know. I'm just a little bit chaotic sometimes and I didn't find a way to focus and always release in the same day. Hopefully in the future, I'll get that done. But in the meantime, here I am. So... What's going on? First of all, as you know, my business is PodSquiz. That's my main focus at the moment. And as I've been telling you for the past uh, two or three episodes, this year uh, we have been focusing on marketing. Yes, our goal is to learn everything we can about marketing and how to bring more users to our platform. And a lot has happened. A lot has happened since the last time we talked. In the meantime, I was traveling. So again, that's why I I was not able to release an episode, which I'm really sorry. But let me start with this. I believe, and this is something that I'm learning, that the skills that you need to scale a product from 0 to 10k MRR, and MRR being monthly recurring revenue, are different skills to the ones required to scale something from 10K to 100K and probably also different from scaling from 100K to 1 million, for instance. And the intervals can vary. I, I just Using round numbers, of course, it, it, the, the limits, the threshold can be in different ways. But yeah, when you're starting out, you it's just the, the beginning of being an entrepreneur. That's what I'm learning. And, and you spend a lot of time, you use a lot of your time, especially as a bootstrapper. Your time is spent to iterate fast, to build products, to release and try to see if there is some traction, try to find the mythical product market fit. But that's only the beginning. And to be honest, when you first start, you feel that that's all. That's all there is to be an entrepreneur. Once you get that product market fit, once you see your product growing, Yes, we have, you have achieved the success and, and from now on, you, it's just you know collecting your money and already starting to think about where you can spend it. But unfortunately, that's not true. That is not true at all. And there's one simple reason to it. The fact that the number of people that enter to your product every month at some point will match the number of people that are leaving. Yes, it's called churn, right? So... When people leave your product, they churn, and there's a percentage. for Let's say, for instance, and this is kind of similar to what we are having with the pod squeeze, we have a churn of 10%. 10% every month of our active users are leaving the platform. So if, for instance, we have, okay, let's say 500 users, 50 users always leave the platform. And if we are only able to bring 50 users each month, then we reach a plateau. This plateau will always happen. It can also be that instead of 10% churn, I have 5% churn. And if I have 5% churn, it it means that instead of 50, so if I have 500 users, instead of 50 leaving, I have 25 leaving, right? So eventually, as the product is growing, if the churn stays the same, it will always hit a plateau, right? So the the big challenge the the next big challenge is to delay the plateau the maximum we can and what happened to us was that we hit this plateau in more or less november october these months we hit the plateau we were not able to grow and we were also not decaying it we just steady in this steady line and the reason is exactly uh, because what i just explained to you which is the churn was more or less the same as the number of people we were able to bring. 
So our churn was around 10%, and I'm trying to, to focus on finding ways to reduce that churn. It's, it's really not easy, to be completely honest with you, because it's not clear. Uh, it would be easy if someone would just say, hey, I don't use your product because A, B, or C. But no, it's very... I've tried to interview our customers. I've tried to do kind of um, a survey when people are leaving, but they just say, I don't use the product enough. What does that mean? Like, to be honest, I, I really don't know. So I've been starting uh, my own podcast for PodSqueeze, so where I interview the, the our customers. And this has been great because this is a great way for me to talk with, with our users and, and to learn more about what they have to say. And I feel that now I start to understand better what we need to improve. And, and I think we, we can control a little better as well the churn. But now the next phase is, okay, how can we grow the product? And this is where I think, and this is based solely on, on it's, it's an hypothesis, I think that now the skill set has to change. As I told you in the beginning, in the first 10K, I'm just investing my time, right? And my time is being invested in what? It's being invested in building a product, it's being invested in understanding the, the users and understanding what the product needs to have to really, really solve a problem. And now it's changing. Now I feel that both myself and Joao when I'm spending time doing some coding or doing this task, I start to realize that, man, everyone could be doing this at the moment. I My time is more valuable if I start doing other stuff. My time is more valuable if I am interviewing my, my customers or if I am strategizing and thinking what should be the next steps or being in conferences, or thinking on alter alternative methods of, of monetization. So I decided to step up, to go to the next phase of entrepreneurship, which is start delegating, finding people that can do these tasks so that I can reclaim some of my time back. And with that time, I can use to things that I do, do things that I believe, really believe are more valuable for uh, the development of pod squids. So it's been an interesting first month uh, because we started hiring and we started, I, we already had a freelancer developer and we decided to tell him to go not full time yet, but to just spend more hours working uh, with us. So we kind of found an agreement here and instead of paying by the hour, we decided to pay by the month, right? So that worked uh, or it's going to start actually in February. And even this month, uh, our developer already did a lot of work. It's almost full time. So uh, my goal is that every time I have a new test that I want to do, instead of me grabbing my laptop and start coding it, I first go to our Trello board and I put the task there and I try to document it as well as I can. Normally I do like a little video, a little loom where I show what, what we want to do and I delegate this task to the developer. Of course, I can also pick up this task if it's urgent or if I have nothing else to do, but mostly the goal is instead of me immediately diving in into you know, solving a, a problem with my fingers and, and coding, I delegate. And it's the same for João. João now, uh, instead of writing himself all the content for our blog, we hired someone to write it for us. And we want to delegate to give him more, um, more independence. And we also hired now recently FEA. Everything, by the way, is, is freelance part-time. So we're not hiring anyone full-time yet. We are very cautious. And even though we have the money to do this, and by the way, every money that we are spending is money that we are making. So there's no like debt or anything. Still, we, we want to be careful. And we want to collect as well as much money as we can. So we are not investing all the money back to the business because we know that the business can die at any time and we need to also collect some like a paycheck something that can pay the bills and, and hopefully to do some kind of cushion in case we need this kind of money right so that's kind of the strategy for now and um, we also are really heavily you know going into seo seo is our really great marketing technique that it's super passive right because it doesn't require us to be actively working on it 
And for that, I just want to uh, speak a little bit about the difference between SEO and, and social media, right? If you are, I, I'm a big Twitter fan and Twitter user, maybe use LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever. One thing that you notice is that in order to take the maximum out of a social media, like Instagram or so, you need to be constantly active. The moment you start stop being active, you will immediately see a decrease in the number of visits that, you know, there are people that you're converting that are coming from your Instagram to your product. That's completely different with SEO, fortunately. With SEO, SEO, you can actually stop writing content and you'll still see the number of clicks going up. And this might last for years, actually. I had a blog post that was kind of trendy uh, with the previous previous project of mine and we didn't touch it we didn't touch it for one two years and if i it, it was getting roughly 100 200 visits per day per day so this is amazing nothing else can 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 do this i don't think instagram can do this i don't think um any social media can do this so that's what we are focusing we're focusing on this kind of more uh, passive sources of marketing more sustainable sources of marketing where we can invest the time now and then we know we can stop and we either will collect the compound, right? So as we keep writing articles, keep writing articles and they will compound and in the end of the in the end of a year of writing articles, we'll have like thousands, thousands of people coming to our website. Or if we just want to rest or not do anything or focus on something else, we know that the company will still keep growing because our marketing sources are there. So now... SEO is one way, um, email is another way, but we want to have as many touch points as possible because now we are entering in this phase where uh, the users, uh, this is not new anymore, right? Like pot squeeze, AI, it's not new. There are tons of competitors. So to convince someone to try pot squeeze before, maybe we w- would only need to basically touch them or tell them about pod squeeze one or two times. Hey, here's pod squeeze. And they would maybe hear about it uh, via a friend and an email and that's it. Now the touch points we need are, are, are much more. So maybe we need four touch points or five touch points, which, which means that we need to be spread out throughout multiple methods, right? We need to be on Google with SEO. We need to be on YouTube. We need to be on Instagram. We need to be on LinkedIn. We need to be with email uh, in conferences. So, and the goal is, if a podcaster, you know, is kind of scrolling through their feed and then they see us on on Instagram and then they hear hear a friend speaking about us and then an influencer speaking about us and then they get an email from us, they'll be like, okay, I mean, I need to check this. Everyone seems to be using PodSquiz and the the degree of trust increases. And by the way, that's also something interesting that we've been noticing is that the conversion rate from Google, it's much lower than the conversion r- rate from someone that actually came as um, a recommendation, right? So if a friend of yours, com- you know, recommend you pod squeeze, you'll be more likely, you'll be much more likely to pay for it because you know that your user using it than if you just search on Google. Also, because when you search on Google, there's, you see there's tons of options and you'll be like, okay, let me, you know, play the field, see multiple options, and then I'll commit with my money. So, yeah, we are trying to, to think now and, and to organize this team of people to focus and, and to keep the company growing and, and mostly doing the marketing. And for that, since we already have like SEO, since we already have the emails, we're trying to see what's going to be the next phase. And to be honest, I still don't know. I don't know if it will be uh, Instagram. I don't know if it will be YouTube. Most likely, I think it will be YouTube for one simple reason. YouTube is similar to kind of SEO. So you can put a lot of videos out. And then even if you stop publishing publishing videos, yes, maybe you'll get a little bit less views, but those videos are still there and are still being searched on YouTube and are still being played. So that's why we want to focus on YouTube. And we started our own podcast, as I said, the lessons from a podcaster. It's a podcast where we interview our customers. So far, it's not working great. I mean, the interviews are great and I get to speak with them and this is really good. But once we publish those on YouTube, on Instagram, it's not very good. Like we get very few views, like 10 views, 15 views. The only thing that kind of works is when we kind of publish a short. We had some shorts that reached 2,000, 3,000 views. 
but the problem is that they get these views and then they stop. They stop growing. So we are still trying to figure out. And one thing that I want to say, kind of to finish this episode, is that the more I am into the entrepreneurship, I, I understand that there's a lot of people that have been through the same. You know, a lot of these things, we like to believe that we are the first and we are figuring things out. And it's true. Everything is different. Like they, how to, the, the way we develop AI-based products is definitely different. Something new. No one ever done this, especially with GPD support and so on. So yeah, there are things that we are conquering, things that are new. But then there's also kind of other concepts that we have seen other people do. So what I'm trying to do now is to get this inspiration and and listen uh, podcasts, listen YouTube interviews. But instead of now focusing on the first 10K, I'm trying to focus on the next 10K. A few things that I've collected that I think might be interesting for you as well. Um, one interview that I've seen, I, I don't remember now like the, the name, but it was like how to go from zero to a million or something. Um, and of course, there's also a lot of bullshit. So you need to kind of you know filter the bullshit out. But one thing that they this guy said was that to go from 10K to 100K, you need to sell to the masses. You need to sell, not to the masses, you need to sell to groups. So instead of doing one-on-one -on -one sales, instead of like trying to get and being happy for each new customer, I need to be selling to 10 new customers and, and you know, 50 new customers. And how can I do this? One is, for instance, doing workshops or partnerships. I do a partnership with us let's say, a networking of podcasters that have like more than 50 podcasts in their network. And I say, we can do a workshop for them and we can teach them how they can repurpose their content. And of course, we'll kind of plug pod squeeze. So instead of being selling this to one person, I'm selling this to 50 people. I can do partnerships with other websites, with other pods, uh, podcasting related websites. And I will announce and then speak about them and they will speak about me. This could also be, right? But instead of being like going one to one to one, I'm doing one to fifty to twin to you know two thousand whatever. That, that that's that's the main goal. Um, so yeah, I think in the end, like we we should not reinvent the wheel, right? There's we yeah we are we are so lucky because we are in in a time of the world where we get access to the most you know clever people, and all of them they have a podcast, they have blog posts, they have books. They have whatever. Like, if you like books, then you have a book about, let's say, Elon Musk, right? I'm not saying if I'm a fan of a guy or not, but uh, come on, he's smart, right? And you can get all of his information, either from books, from interviews, tweets, whatever. And there's a lot of people. You can get access to the, the big ones, you know, the Jeff Bezos, the Mark Zuckerbergs, or the small, a little bit smaller ones, right? You can get access, even a lot of indie hackers, right? Tony Dean, Peter Levels, Arvid. Uh, Danny Postman, a lot of them, they share their interviews, either on Indie Hackers, also in, in the Wannabe Entrepreneur Podcast. There's a lot of interviews you can learn from. So just, I think it's good. Just keep this information flowing, take notes, learn from them because they know a lot. They really know a lot and they've tried. They have tried a lot of things. So why are you going to try it again and fail? I'm not saying that they know everything and whatever they say, you can apply, you know, copy paste to your project. Probably not. But there's probably a lot of things that are failure and, and always fail for a lot of people. And you can just avoid these mistakes, right? Uh, for example, let's say I just released this, this episode and I have this podcast and I, I have my social media, I have my Twitter, my Instagram, whatever. I go there and say, hey, new episode is out, copy paste. Most likely, especially if you, know, you have no audience, no one will care. So why doing this? This is a mistake. You're just wasting your time. Copying, pasting there. You think you're doing something, but you're doing nothing. You're just getting, uh, it's actually tricky because you you think, okay, I don't need to do anything else. I, I'm doing Twitter, but you are not because you're just committing this huge mistake that a lot of people do, right? A lot of people do these mistakes, but you're just doing, and you can, you know, instead of wasting, let's say one, two, three months um, making this mistake, you can just learn from these people with one podcast and you don't do this mistake. So again, one thing that is common from the first phase of entrepreneurship or from zero to 10 and another uh, and the second phase, 10 to 100, is that time is our biggest asset. And we need to be really conscious on how we use our time. That's the most important thing. That's really the most important thing. So if you need to invest some money to hire someone 
to delegate some tasks, if you need to automate some processes, if you need to say no to certain things, right? No to projects, no to some, you know, tentatives or, or doing mistakes, these mistakes that can be easily avoidable, then say no to those things. Uh, because I think in, in, in the long term, this will make us better entrepreneurs. As you know, that's my goal. That's my goal with this podcast. That's my goal with um, in in life, my professional life, is to become the best entrepreneur I can be. I want to make millions. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but yeah, that's that's what I want to do. I want to make you know a couple millions and and raise my companies and 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 prove others and myself that it's possible to bootstrap a company and and make tons of money. Now, will I be able to do that? I don't know. I believe I can. But I'm also, you know, pragmatic and rational. I know it's really hard, so maybe I won't. But uh, we need to learn, right? We need to be humble and to know that if we want to reach that goal, it will require a lot of, you know, commitment. Uh, it's our calling, so we need to invest a lot of our time doing this, learning, and and surrounding ourselves with people that can help us. And hopefully, one day we'll be better entrepreneurs and, and learn and, and, and reach our whatever financial goals and, uh, you know, life goals in general. So yeah, that's basically it. That's all I have for you today in this episode of the wannabe entrepreneur. Uh, once again, I appreciate you for listening to this podcast. If you have any questions or cool projects that you want to share with me, shoot me a message on Twitter. My handle is WB Tiago. And make sure to share this uh, podcast and these episodes with your friends. If you like what you're hearing, yeah, sharing is caring. And uh, last but not least, make sure to just give it a review. If you are listening to this on Spotify or Apple, uh, giving it a review, there's an option and you can give five star review and that will take this podcast to new years. Thank you so much. This was another wannabe entrepreneur. See you next time.